All right, uh, welcome everybody. This is our sixth virtual Monday lunch. Um, we've got Dick Kishner with us today. And before we get to Dick, we're gonna talk, uh, we got a quick update from our president, Bill Hill. Well, howdy, Ags. I also wanna welcome you. Today, we've got a very special guest, one of our very own, and I look forward to hearing that. As uh, Logan said, this is our sixth virtual Monday lunch, but really it's our 13th week since our last Monday lunch together at Aggie Park. So it's been a little difficult time for everyone. And uh, we picked up this uh, new format about uh, six weeks ago. Thank you, Logan. We've had some really great programs. Uh, last week, we had Ross Barart, the, uh, the Texas A&M Athletic Director, and he did a fantastic job. I highly recommend, if you didn't see that, take the time to go back and, and review that. You can see that program by going to the Aggie Park webpage. And there's a, t there's a tab up at the top, it's called events. And inside that tab, there's another tab called past events. And then you just click on uh, Ross's icon and you'll see him. Well, look, I know that everyone really wants to know what's the, uh, one of the key questions is, when are we gonna open up Aggie Park? And when are we gonna resume Monday lunch again? So let me take care of that first question first. You know, Aggie, opening up Aggie Park may be easier uh, than the second one. You know, the governor's given guidance that allows uh, weddings to take place, chapel service, uh, some kind, uh, a number of outside events, some limited inside events, and we are looking at that very, very carefully so we can uh, proceed. We actually have a San Antonio a and board meeting on Tuesday, and that's one of the topics, and I am pretty optimistic that we're going to get the green light to go ahead and uh, open up Aggie Park at least for our events. Um, you know, part of the problem is that there's a, lot of, there's a lot of constraints and restrictions on what you must do to socially uh, uh, distance, uh, clean things. You, you have to serve food a certain way and do a number of other things. Um, when we get ready to, op to uh, have Monday lunch, it's a little bit more complicated because the way the guidance is that you can only have one party sit at a table and, the t and that one party can be no more than 10, but they define a party of individuals as those folks that are related to each other or that they arrive together to the event in one, in one vehicle. So typically in Monday lunch, we have you know, about 70 different people show up at Monday lunch. And uh, I don't see at this point in time how practical it is to put them in 70 different tables. Now I'm probably exaggerating a little bit. There's ways to do that. But we are looking at that and we want to get to that as soon as we can. Part of our challenge is if you take a look at the number of COVID-19 cases that are uh, testing positive every single week, the seven day rolling average as reported in the news today was 72. So for the last seven days, there's been 72 people that have tested positive every single day. And you recall in, May, in, um, in March when we closed the city down and the county and later the state, that was when the first case hit. In fact, the uh, rolling average for one April was 20 per day for the last seven days. The rolling average for May was 30, and now we're at 72. I sure hope that goes down. And we know that part of the, uh, part of the challenge for that is that we've tested about 3,000 more people than we did before. So you're gonna have more positive tests. But we're looking forward uh, to opening up, and I, I'm pretty optimistic we will do so in June at some point in time. Speaking of, of that, uh, moving forward carefully, our young Aggies have got some planned events already. Uh, they've got uh, Aggie Happy Hour and planned tentatively to be determined the location. It may be at Aggie Park, but that's June 18th. A uh, young Ags are gonna do a steak and uh, game night, which they get together, they uh, eat steak and grill and play games. And that uh, potentially is Aggie Park too, and that's scheduled for June 29th. And we have some events that were postponed Aggie Family Barbecue was uh, scheduled in, in May. That's been postponed till J July 18th. And so that's just a little over a month. We're gonna get that planning started and we'll give you more details. Fortunately, that event is mostly outside and I, I don't see any issues with that. The Aggie uh, Golf Tournament, a fundraiser we do every year, had been scheduled in late March, but we now have that scheduled for September 10th. Traditionally in June, we have a scholarship lunch. And so, uh, we actually are working with the scholarship committee and the students right now, and we're looking to conduct a scholarship lunch at Aggie Park on June 22nd. 
And right now it looks like we're gonna uh, minimize the participation from the club members. Uh, we've got some feedback. We haven't got all the feedback from the students. Some of them are willing to come and share with them their experiences last semester and talk to us about that. There is some apprehension and we're still working out the detail, but I'm pretty confident one way or the other on June 22nd, we're gonna have an Aggie student scholarship lunch. And that may be our rehearsal for how we get back into doing an in-person Aggie, Aggie, uh, a Monday lunch at Aggie Park. Okay, before we, I turn it over to Logan, and I can't wait to hear Dick talk about his, uh, some of his adventures in his life. I do want to give you a recap on the capital campaign. So again, it's, uh, it's tough times for a lot of folks, so there's not a lot of expectation. We're not really actively seeking uh, funds at this time, but as a matter of fact, our, uh, we, we receive funds every, every single week. We currently uh, have $941,479,000. That's out of a goal of $1.6 million. So we're a little over $600,000 short, of which we only need to raise about $300,000, and the rest of that will be matched by the Mays Foundation. Uh, if, you, if you're keeping up with it, that's an increase of $4,079 over last, at last Monday lunch. So again, we're making progress, slow, but we hope to get there sometime. Okay, Logan, I'm gonna turn it over to you. You're a great facilitator. Can't wait to hear about uh, from our own uh, our club members. Over to you, Logan, dig them. Thanks, thanks, Bill. Thanks for the update. And I uh, sure hope uh, we can get back out to Aggie Park soon um, and, and resume as normal. Uh, that's what makes our club so special is that we are able to meet on Mondays um, and have guest speakers. Um, and, and one thing that's also very unique is just getting to interact with uh, our club members on a weekly basis and sitting down at lunch, um, getting to break bread and, and share stories and, and talk. And um, we've got so many interesting uh, members uh, that we get to talk to and, and they've got so many great stories. And uh, so uh, I reached out to our guest today, Dick Kistner, uh, class of 65, and uh, so that uh, everybody can, can get to know him a little bit better and, uh, and, and get to see some of the members that you can, you can meet on a weekly basis if you come to, to our Monday lunch. So uh, I'd like to introduce Dick Kistner. How's it going, Dick? Everything's wonderful, Logan. And before I uh, get into this, I want to compliment you and Bill on the previous uh, Monday luncheon speakers and what they have brought to the San Antonio a and Club. Just outstanding. Well, we, we appreciate the kind words. Um, well, can you tell us, when, when, do you, when do you first recall coming to Aggie Park for, for Monday lunch or for, uh, for any event? Well, it goes back to the year of uh, about uh, 1968. And uh, the, uh, I happen to have been uh, a, a chairman of the Speakers Bureau for the American Society of Civil Engineers. And in doing so, uh, one of our uh, members of the San Antonio Club said, since you're speaking to all these high schools, and you're talking about engineering, and you're talking about um, uh, how a young person can become an engineer, why don't you consider uh, being chairman of the Speakers Bureau for the San Antonio a and Club and uh, then conducting uh, various events uh, for young people to know how to really become a, uh, an engineer. So that's started in 1968 and I'll have to share with you one real story uh, about that and it, it goes back to the fact that Aggie Park was not uh, we were just the pavilion with the office at that time and I had sent a letter to Randy Matson, who in 1968 as you know he uh, happened to win a gold medal in Mexico City. And I asked him to be speaker at, the, uh, at Aggie Park to 
the Alamo Council of Scouts, uh, area scouts, and that include Boy Scouts and Cub Scouts. Well, here is Randy Madsen comes in and he's now speaking. And you could see the mouths of these young people just so overtaken by the fact that uh, they were talking to a uh, person that received the gold medal for the shot put. And uh, you gotta realize that uh, it's not easy to follow Randy Matson. <laughs> and, and I had the opportunity then to tell a bunch of young people between the ages probably 10 and 14 about engineering. And you can imagine <laughs> that's, uh, that was quite an event <laughs> anyway. Uh, I hope that gives you a little bit of when I started. <laughs> where, where were y'all meeting at that time? We were actually meeting at Turtle Creek at that time. And uh, of course, uh, our great leadership and Jim Upmore was, uh, would get us into Turtle Creek and we had Wanda E. Creek, I think was helping with some things. And oh, it was a, a very good place to, to actually uh, hold the uh, club meetings. Now we uh, we were also, uh, to my knowledge, Aggie. We were always having the Aggie barbecue as well, the family barbecue. Um, did you were you did you get involved with that um, right away? Uh, did not get involved with that right away, Logan. Uh, I had so many other great uh, opportunities to serve uh, the park. Uh, I actually got involved uh, with the. Uh, barbecue once I became a uh, board member. You know, you, uh, I, I served for nine years as the scholarship coordinator and then uh, came on the, the board as a, uh, you know, going up through the ranks uh, uh, to, uh, as it still is today, where you go through the ranks. And uh, probably about the second year on the board, I started attending the uh, family barbecue. And you, uh, I'll, I'll mention you were uh, past president 1978, correct? Uh, I think that was the year I was past president. <laughs> I mean, you were, you, were, you were president of, you were president 1978. I'm sorry. We, uh, that is correct. President 1978, followed uh, good looking Sam Strachey. That had, to be, that had to be fun. Hey, let me, let me tell you, I followed uh, Wayne Freiling also. And Wayne Freiling, yes, sir. I want you to know that Freiling was the person that set up what we call the manual of operation for Aggie Park. And Freiling put together everybody's job assignment for each individual on the board. And he was quite a leader. He said that if you do not perform excellence, then I will put your name in the San Antonio Light and the San Antonio Express and tell how you failed at not doing what you were supposed to do. And I, you got to know Wayne Fryland to know that he wasn't joking. He was telling the truth. But anyway, that's uh, another quick story. <laughs> I had the I had the the great pleasure of knowing Wayne, uh, knowing him well. He was a, a great Aggie, great guy. Uh, he he definitely uh, pulled a couple of uh, fun jokes on me when I uh, first started attending Aggie Park. Uh, and and uh, I you know I remember him. Uh, well, it was kind of a rumor, and I was hoping you could clear this up. I heard him mention one time something about. Uh, a water tower and possibly getting left behind uh, that you might have been uh, stuck in a water tower or, or can you can you elaborate on that story? Yeah well yes it was in Lytle and they were building a water tower and as you know iron workers are known to uh, love a lot of ladies and uh, 
I was down inside the water tower to measure the thickness of the paint put on the skin of the inside of that tank, the metal skin. And as I was doing that, I heard a lot of horns beeping and so forth. And I think that there was a um, mobile uh, house of uh, ill repute that came by beeping the horn for all these iron workers. And they decided that they were gonna leave me down in that tank while they, uh, let's say, went to lunch <laughs> with these ladies. <laughs> and uh, about four hours later, they were back and I, they got me out of that tank. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't know. I didn't know uh, that much about iron workers and, and yeah, all right. You need to know about iron workers. You bet. Well, uh, let's back up a little, just so everybody knows. You are. Uh, you've been an uh, an engineer. Uh, was your your trade? And um, you. Uh, let's see. You got involved with uh, Carl Raba. Um, was that 1974? Yes, actually, uh, it was 1970. Well, I got involved with Carl for a long time, but joining the firm was official in 1974. But I was working in the uh, last half of 1973 because you know Carl wants to get everybody out in front of everything, <laughs> and so in uh, February of '74, I officially joined the firm. Well, I, uh, Robert Kistner has uh, always been a great uh, uh, friend of the club and great supporter of the club, and uh, we, we sure do appreciate it. Uh, how did you and uh, Carl meet, and, and how did y'all make that, uh, that connection? Well, let me tell you, the, uh, the meeting came about because he was president of the Texas Society of Professional Engineers, Bear Chapter. And I was president of the San Antonio branch of the American Society of Civil Engineers. And we got together because it was not a, a, a smart thing to have a meeting one week for one organization and the next week for the, another organization. We said, why don't we just join together and have the meeting uh, which we ended up meeting over at the Lubies on Fredericksburg Road jointly. And that then, uh, Carl and I, uh, we had a, uh, uh, a member of the San Antonio a &M Club by the name of William Goldston. And William was Carl's vice president at that time. And William said, uh, Dick, uh, uh, why don't you join Carl and come to work for Robin and Associates. And I said, well, you know, I'm getting tired of all these lawsuits and other things that are going on. I think I'll give Carl a shot at it. <laughs> and so I went over to meet with Carl. <laughs> and we were, we were sitting in, in his office and uh, he, he said, Dick, you know, I'd like for you to join the firm. And I said, Carl, you know that I can't stand you. <laughs> I just can't stand you. And Carl started laughing. And I thought, oh, you know, if you can laugh at that, we're bound to be able to work out anything. <laughs> and that's how that's how it started. Well, y'all y'all had a uh, y'all had a long a long rela successful relationship. Can you? Yeah, you've been a part of so many neat projects um, at Robert Kistner. Can you talk about? Uh, some of the, the unique or the exciting or, or uh, uh, large jobs that y'all that you were a part of around San Antonio, up in just a big part, not in San Antonio, but all over. But uh. all over, yeah. Well, uh, Logan, I uh, appreciate you asking that that question. I guess the the one that uh, we first of all we did most all the geotechnical and construction materials testing of almost all of the large structures in downtown San Antonio, but specifically the Alamo Dome. And I'll tell you a little story about that. We were meeting with the uh, architect of record uh, and the engineer of record, which happened to be W. Simpson Company. 
and uh, we were meeting with the owner who had representatives uh, for the city of San Antonio. And uh, Doug Stedman, who was the uh, lead engineer for W. Simpson Company, said, uh, uh, you know, you're going to put up these four standards. And what we need to do, uh, Kissner, is have uh, two borings. And those borings uh, will be done here at this location and this other location. I said, uh, Doug, uh, I'm going to have to get up and leave. I'm leaving the room. He said, what is the problem? I said, well, Doug, when you have four supports that are going to carry a roofing system that people are, the public are going to be in, you better drill every one of those locations and you better know what's down below and you better know how to tie into it. And I said, besides that, we're going to put in two more in the area where you have to excavate 20 feet because of the arena area that is going to be there. So anyway, uh, Doug said, uh, Dick, why don't you come back <laughs> and we'll go ahead and, and do what you're suggesting. I said, fine. But that's, we've done uh, so many large projects in downtown San Antonio, the Hyatt Regency, the uh, uh, just did you, you know, have anything to did you have anything to do with the uh, Tower of Americas? Yes, we did. Yes, we did. Uh, had a lot to do with the Tower of the Americas, as you know or may not know. The Tower of the Americas. Uh, let's see, uh, Fegan Span and Pinnell were the uh, structural engineers on it, and there's as much concrete below the ground as there is above the ground. Uh, believe it or not, for the wow. foundations uh, that uh, is prepared there. It has a, uh, a, a mat foundation uh, on drill piers, and the drill piers were huge uh, in diameter and depth. They went into the blue shell in downtown San Antonio. And in the process of, uh, you know, the tower was what we call slip form. And they slip the forms and move them up and as they continue to get to the top. Well, when they did get to the top, they, then they started building the, uh, uh, the, the uh, portion of the structure that was uh, carrying uh, the uh, kitchens and the viewing area and uh, all of the nice stuff now that we see the tower that revolves around the shaft and uh, the uh, actual, uh, we had a windstorm, uh, uh, a group called Lift Slab were lifting the uh, steel frame up in the air and uh, we had a, a windstorm that caused the lifting rods to start swaying a lot and they are very strong in tension but very weak in, in, in uh, uh, bending on them. And so the actual tower then fell. <laughs> it only fell a very short distance because it got stuck on the shaft. Oh <laughs> so the, they realized what the problem was and went back and put U-hooks on the frame to keep the uh, rods from uh, being able to uh, be impacted by the any weather condition and they lifted the tower and that's how we got the tower built so i, I had no idea that the uh that the concrete went th that deep that's uh that's a pretty big hole uh being around really deep holes like that have you ever fallen in one <laughs> you you know i've fallen in one <laughs> <laughs> hey we were we were doing a a project in uh the Bronfels, in fact, it was, uh, uh, I think it was in the Bronfels courthouse. But uh, anyway, uh, I happened to, uh, well, I, I think NWB was doing the drilling. And uh, I was watching the rig and uh, the rig sometimes gets out of balance, uh, not out of balance, but the frame of the, the 
truck that's supporting the drilling operation, it's able to spin and, and, and so I, uh, they had drilled the shaft and the, the, as they drilled it, uh, then they would take all the cuttings and, and store them outside and then they'd spin to the next shaft and uh, they were drilling that one and when they did, the, the, the cab of the drilling rig uh, gets away from the, the actual truck and I backed up and when I backed up, I stepped into the drill shaft and fell 35 feet into a hole. <laughs> and when the gravel and stuff quit coming in on me, I was about three feet into uh, soft material. Uh, not hurt. My hard hat followed me all the way down. And uh, so I tried to put my legs on each side of the uh, shaft and try to walk out of the shaft. And uh, that didn't work because I'd hit a gravel strata and, and just roll back down. So what would happen, I could hear the drill rig stop. And when the drill rig stopped, stopped actually uh, drilling uh, in another hole, uh, I could start hollering. And the difficult thing was, is that drill rig was gonna come back with what we call, uh, to put the bell on the bottom of the shaft with another portion of the uh, drilling operations. And so uh, when I started hollering, a guy walked by and he looked down and he said, what are you doing there? I said, well, I asked the same question, how stupid I am to fall in the drill shaft. But anyway, they got me out of there and I went down to the pennies there and in the Braunfels got me another jumpsuit because it was just full of gravel and everything else. <laughs> and uh, went back to work and uh, that was an exciting time frame anyway. Glad to be glad to have that over with. <laughs> hey, we're glad you made it out there. <laughs> well, uh, what uh, you know, you've, you've been involved with the park for so long. Um, what are you know, what are the things that keep coming you back? What are the things that you that uh, you find so special with the club and and uh, that have kept you involved for so long? Well, it's obviously Aggies that that you stay so involved. And it's the quality of the Aggies and the uh, fact that they all went through uh, the core values of Texas A&M. And, you know, two of the best things that I accomplished as a, as a president, I feel the world started off with the fact that uh, I made the decision that we were going to leave Turtle Creek and go to Aggie Park for our luncheons. And in doing so, we needed an executive director. And I think the next best thing I did was employ Irma Lee Pickett. And Irma Lee was the classiest uh, lady and an extremely good business person. She had been the uh, past vice president of uh, Western Union in San Antonio. And she would uh, keep our meetings very professional. She would rent the park very professional and she would uh, uh, keep us uh, moving toward what we are today. And uh, Irma Lee, was a giant when it comes to communications. She would uh, take after our, our each speaker would make their presentation, she would send them a Western Union thank you. And that was very first class and uh, very professional. Well, uh, speaking of uh, uh, women involved with Aggie Park and, and classy women at that, uh, we can't have this conversation without you mentioning your wife, Patsy, and her <laughs> involvement. 
She's, uh, as, as, as I recall, she's been uh, past president of the Aggie Women's Club. Is that correct? That's correct. And she's been a, a, a real asset as far as uh, encouraging uh, the youth to uh, uh, continue their education. Uh, she just, uh, she's sat on so many boards, uh, library, uh, uh, the uh, children's shelter, and those kind of things. She's just a uh, great lady. She helped you. She helped you get set up on this Zoom call too. Uh, <laughs> she, <laughs> she, she's still still looking after you. Damn well, right. Um, you, you've spoken a lot about uh, you know the the youth uh, uh, the uh, young Aggies and, and getting involved and getting informed and and um, you know these days I see a lot um, on Facebook and and uh, in the young Aggies that. They'll post online, hey, uh, we're looking for a job, you know, just moved to town, we're looking for a job, anybody, you know, hiring. And, um, you know, I would like to kind of challenge those young Aggies to come out to the park and come out to Monday lunch um, and sit down and talk with um, our members and, you know, sit down and talk with Dick Kistner or Jerry Bowles or Bob Kahn or just all the great Aggies that come every week and, and uh, you know, that can really, y'all are, are just a, a wealth of experience and knowledge that uh, can be tapped into. And I, and I would hope that more of the younger Aggies would, would come out to the park more often. And so hopefully when we get things back going, um, we can, we can have, uh, get some more of those young Aggies out to the park. That'd be really well, good. Well, well, I'd like to tell you that the young Aggies can get more value at Aggie Park if they would just uh, find the time that they can give to come to the park because the Aggie Network is, is just unbelievable. I mean, hell, when I walked into many professional meetings, the first thing I'd do is look for a senior ring. And I'd look for all the senior rings before I would say anything. And uh, uh, I knew who would understand and who had common sense and who cared about what they were doing. And those are values that you can't always get uh, from your neighbors. You need to get them from the, uh, from Aggies that know and respect the right way to do things. I completely agree. Uh, when uh, when I hear people asking asking for jobs or looking for jobs, um, I can I can point them in the direction of, of uh, where to look. But if you want to talk to the to the people that uh, that are that that are hiring, that own the businesses, that the successful Aggies in 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 San Antonio, so many of them come every week, and it's uh, it's just a great place. And and uh, we appreciate you coming. Uh, I mean, you're there for every event, every just about every everything that goes on at Aggie Park, you're a part of, and and uh, we uh, greatly appreciate your your support of the club. I know that. I appreciate the club. And uh, uh, there's so many. Uh, you were the first to say when I asked you if you wanted to come on this. You said, "Oh, there's so many other great Aggies you could talk to." And uh, and uh, and you're right. There are there's there's plenty of them at the park, and uh, and it's it's just a great great place. Uh, well, Dick, thank you very much for your time and for uh, coming on to the uh, virtual lunch. We where hopefully we can get this thing back back going soon. Uh, as Bill was saying, um, the, with the scholarship lunch on June 22nd, um, hopefully that's just a good uh, uh, precursor to to uh, more to come and we can we can be meeting the following week uh, hopefully bill what do you think well hey logan uh and dick great program as always i thoroughly enjoyed it i always love to listen to dick and t all his stories and it's really important that we remember our heritage and the legacy here at uh, aggie park logan and i and everybody else on the board just hope that we can continue that uh, for the years and years to come and speaking of the, you know the future I just have to take this opportunity to say, you know, this last weekend, Saturday, 
was June 6th, and that was D-Day. With all the things going on in the world, the COVID-19, the racial tensions, and, and, and uh, police protest, didn't get a lot of fanfare. But there's one very, very, very important event that happened. I just want to make sure everybody knows. Uh, Captain Will Hill, class of 11, his wife, Marissa, uh, helped join into the world the newest Aggie, uh, Emma Jane Hill, class of 2042, born on June 6th, D-Day, in the early mornings at Fort Drum, New York. And Ooh. by the way, they are coming to College Station. They'll be reporting in about uh, the 3rd or 5th of July. And my son, uh, fourth generation Aggie, will be uh, getting his MBA uh, following up uh, for the next two years at A&M. So can't wait, we'll be at A&M a long time. So I just had to throw that in. Some good news and despite, you know, amongst all this, uh, all this uh, tension and bad news sometimes. Congratulations, great news. <laughs> <laughs> great news. All right, Logan. well, uh, look forward to seeing you guys. Uh, go ahead, Dick. Uh, uh, Logan, uh, I want to say with leadership like Bill and yours and the folks that are on the board, uh, Aggie Park's in good hands, I'm telling you. Wonderful hands. We, we appreciate it. Uh, we, we look forward to getting together in person soon, and uh, y'all take care. And uh, next week, we uh, uh, be, be looking for, uh, we'll have one more uh, special guest next week. Uh, to be determined and then um, hopefully we're back at it. Hopefully we're back at the park. So looking forward to it. Woo! <laughs> you guys take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Gigabags. Bye.